Hello, welcome to part 8 of Clinical Physiotherapy MCQ series. Let's move to our 36th question. During the physical therapy examination of a patient with shoulder pain, the patient's active and passive shoulder flexion is 110 degree with an abrupt hard end feel at the end of the available range. This patient most likely has Option A, subacromial bursitis. Option B, rotator cuff tear. Option C, adhesive capsulitis. Option D, bicepital tendonitis. And the answer is Option A, subacromial bursitis. Explanation to this question is Regarding option 1, commonly, passive and active range of motion are not equally limited and are more likely to be problematic for shoulder abduction. An empty end feel is more likely. Regarding option 2, range of motion is more limited secondary to muscle weakness. Also, a hard end feel would not be present. Examination findings of the shoulder flexion limitation equal in both passive and active range of motion and accompanied by hard end feel are indicative of adhesive capsulitis. Commonly, passive range of motion is not limited and does not have an hard end feel present. Moving to our 37th question, you are working on a team with a nurse in cardiac rehabilitation program. The patient currently is an inpatient and is discharged from stage 1 cardiac rehabilitation to stage 2 program. Which of the following would not be a goal to expect this patient to accomplish at the end of the stage 1 cardiac rehabilitation? Option A. Independent in activities of daily living. Option B. Independent in patient diet. Option C, increased maximal oxygen consumption. Option D, independent in patient and family education regarding risk factors. And the answer is Option C, increased maximal oxygen consumption. Explanation to this question is You would not expect a patient to show an increase in maximal oxygen consumption at the end of the stage 1. All the other answers would be appropriate goals and patients should have accomplished them. Moving to our 38th question. While the neurointensive care unit, you are asked to treat a patient who has involved in a car accident. He is an 18-year-old male comatized. The following postures are observed when you turned on the light. Lower extremities are planned affixed and fully extended. Upper extremity is positioned with shoulder adducted, elbow extended, forearm pronated and wrist flexed. With which best describes the posture you observe? Option A. Decerebrate rigidity. Option B. Decorticate rigidity. Option C. Decerebrate spacity. Option D. Decorticate spacity. And the answer is Option A. Decerebrate rigidity. Explanation to this question is Decerebrate rigidity of lower extremities, plantar flexed, fully extended, forearm pronated, and wrist flexed. Decerebrate rigidity would most likely have occurred if the patient had an injury to the diencephalon, pons, or midbrain. Moving to our 39th question. Following a cerebrovascular accident, a patient is evaluated for cognitive and perceptual dysfunctions. The patient is asked to sack several wooden blocks. After picking up a block, the patient is unable to determine how the block should be used. This dysfunction is most likely due to Option A. Homonymous hemianosia Option B. Astrogenesis Option C. Unilateral neglect Option D. Constructional apraxia And the answer is Option D. Constructional apraxia Explanation to this question is Homonymous hemianosia describes a visual impairment. There is no evidence of visual limitation. Astrogenesis is an ability to recognize an object by handling the object without looking at the object. Unilateral neglect describes the ability to register and intellect the stimulus from one side of the body. Constructional apraxia describes a cognitive dysfunction in which a patient does not know what to do with the blocks. Moving to our 40th question. A patient with post-stroke status works with a physiotherapist on a MAT program. The therapist assists the patient in lateral weight shifting activities while positioned in prone on elbow. Which therapeutic exercise technique would you allow the patient to improve dynamic stability with this activity? 
ऑप्शन ए ऑल्टरिंग आइसोमेट्रिक्स ऑप्शन बी अप्रोक्सीमेशन ऑप्शन सी रिदमिक इनिशिएशन ऑप्शन डी टाइमिंग ऑफ एनफिसिस एंड द आंसर इज Option B, approximation. Explanation to this question: Approximation, as well as known as proprioceptive neuromuscular feedback, can provide proprioceptive feedback for patients' body to regain control post-stroke status. It is designed to facilitate stability and contraction through joint compression. So that's all for today. If you need further clarification, check the description box and give your feedback in the comment box. If you like this MCQ session. Do subscribe to this channel for more videos. Thank you.